Welcome to session two of our amazing School of Prophets, part of our Ephesian Schools of Ministry, where God is ministering into our lives to maximize the ministry that he has for us. That we are beyond what humans can possibly be by the operation of the Spirit of God as he seeks to make us more apostolic, more prophetic, more evangelistic, more instructional and more pastoral in our lives. God is amazing and he has an amazing plan to build up the body of Christ that we can, in these series, and in this series we're looking at the school of the prophets, become the prophetic people of God. It is the most exciting series because it is one of the major things that sets us apart from the world. In session one, we were looking at the guidance of the Holy Spirit that sets us apart from the world. They think that we are crazy because we follow an invisible God and that we, that we hear from God. If they think that's crazy, then they will think this subject is even crazier because the topic tonight is tongues, the gift of the Holy Spirit, an amazing gift that God has given us. If we, can't, if we follow a God that we can't see and speak a language that nobody understands, then it's no wonder. They think that... I would like to start out with this statement, that speaking in tongues is the will of God. Look at Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And Acts 1.8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth and Acts 2 38 after this had happened Peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And so at the outset we can see that we are afar off. We are in the future as well. And we are part of the many, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And so this promise is to us. And we see here that they waited to receive it and that it was a promise this was the instructions i'd like to point out the situation of mankind otherwise from james chapter 3 verse 5 to 8 the tongue is a small part of the body but it makes great boasts consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark the tongue also is a fire a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Hell's fire is in the tongue of natural man. It is set on fire by, he by hell. The whole course of your life is set on fire by it. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. But God has sent heaven's fire upon us to give us the tongue of the spirit to replace the tongue of man. Luke chapter 3 and verse 16 says, John answered saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I'm sure he's speaking about the fire at the end of the age, after the second coming, when everything is made new. But I am sure he's also speaking about the fire of the Holy Spirit itself 
because of the words that are spoken in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 to 4. As we begin to look at the factors in receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. We see that when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And so we can see that the fire of God is coming upon us. Whether it's seen or unseen, they perceived it in the Spirit, something that looked like fire, that touched each one of them and they began to speak in other tongues. That the Holy Spirit is taking our tongue to a new level to do something that we're going to be learning about in this session. Father, I just thank you for everyone listening tonight. Father, I pray that your word will be near them, that your revelation will be upon their hearts. Lord, that the natural mind that does not perceive spiritual things will be helped by your spirit. Lord, to see what is being discerned in their innermost man, in their spirit, that, Father, their mind would not be unfruitful in your things. But, Father, I pray for your revelation to dawn upon every mind, for a renewing of the mind to walk in all your good, acceptable and perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, so as we look at the factors of receiving the gift of tongues, we see in that verse from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, that they were obedient. They were still there in Jerusalem when the day of Pentecost had fully come. That they had been directed by Jesus to go and wait until they received the gift. And this was around the 40th day after the resurrection. And the day of Pentecost was the 50th day after Passover. And so they were there at least a week waiting for the gift. So they were obedient. We see here that in Acts, they had to wait to an appointed day. But the day of Pentecost, that day, came when the gift should be poured out, when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh, according to the verse that we read out earlier in the session. The Spirit has been poured out. We don't have to wait for a week. We don't have to wait for Pentecost next year after Easter. But we can receive the gift now at any day. But nevertheless, obedience and seeking it are still an ingredient in receiving the gift of tongues. If you do not want it, you will not get it. If you do not believe it, you cannot receive it. These are truths that apply to all the things of God. They were prayerfully seeking it. They were prayerfully waiting on it. And being in an attitude of prayer where you pray and desire and ask to receive what you are waiting for, what you are obediently waiting for. They were praying with others as well. And so it is often the case that people receiving the Holy Spirit are in a prayer meeting or in a service with others and praying as well. It is also true that the Spirit of God began to enable them as they spoke. It was a partnership. They spoke as the Spirit of God began to move and the Holy Spirit enabled them and gave them yet more and more ability. And this is what I observe, have observed over the years, that as the Spirit of God is stirring, it doesn't take much to stir the Spirit. It only takes to, to gather together or to set yourself apart, to be in his presence, and he's suddenly there. And the Spirit of God is so desirous of that situation that it doesn't take much to centre on the movement of God's Spirit and to sense something. 
And as the things of earth, as the song go, uh, grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, as you become spiritually aware, as you are in most prayer circumstances, as we set aside the things of this earth, as we close our eyes, as we focus on him, the spirit is there stirring. And as we're in that place of wanting to uh, speak with other tongues, then there's a a place of uh, obedience where we open our mouths and we begin to speak, trusting him. Stepping out, as it were, on a, a step of faith or a leap of faith to not speak in our language, but to speak in the heavenly language. Then the spirit enables them right there in that moment. And like a a small child uttering their first word. They had no idea they were going to be able to utter their first word. They had no idea what sound was going to come out of their mouth. And yet because of their desire to communicate, then they uttered sounds that made no sense. And yet they were expressing something in their heart and in their mind. And so it is that as we are wanting to pray in the spirit and to receive the gift of being able to do that, then we take a step of faith to express the inexpressible. In Acts chapter 10, verse 44, we see that the gift of tongues also happens spontaneously. Verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speaking with tongues and magnifying God. And so we can see here in this passage of Scripture that they hadn't yet got to the point where they even asked specifically for the Holy Spirit. But they were hearing about it and hearing about the movement of God. And as they were together in that meeting, there's a There's obviously a stirring in their spirit and he used the words the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles also. And they heard them begin to speak with tongues. They wouldn't have even known what was happening and yet they found themselves speaking with tongues. And I do know people, my wife included, who didn't even know what it was at a Christian concert and began to speak in tongues. They also received it by laying on of hands. In Acts chapter 19, uh, Paul records, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, We have not so much as heard of whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now we come to it. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. This is the normal experience. Whether it's in a meeting, except of course if it's spontaneous, then at some point somebody, a believer, will lay hands on you and pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was right there with the Apostle Paul. He had just led these guys through the waters of baptism, about 12 guys, He just baptized them and he laid hands upon them, still dripping wet, and yet the Spirit of God was there enough. They were relaxed enough that they could step out and begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit is right there. Where two or three are gathered together, then he's right there in the midst. As we gather together to him, he is right there. There's also a passage of scripture that says that if we, God will not give us a stone if we're seeking for something else. He says, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to those that seek him? God, God is not wanting to not give you the Holy Spirit. He doesn't need to be convinced. It's a gift. He's offering it. In as much as it's also a promise and it's also a command, then we can understand that it is the will of God. 
So he won't stand in the way of his own will. It's more likely us that feel silly saying something that we don't understand or not being willing to step out, not being willing to step beyond a little embarrassment. Nobody wants to do anything in front of others that seems unskilled or that they don't know how to do. You'd rather get some practice by yourself before you go and uh, do a demonstration for other people, right? That's our nature. But if we really want something, then we can overcome our inhibition and we can step out and begin to trust God. And this is what happened. He explained it, he prayed for them, and they spoke. This brings me to the nature of tongues. What is tongues? What is it exactly? And why is it so important? We've already touched on one reason why it's so important, and that is that our tongue needed redeeming. The tongue of man is like a, the tongue from hell. And God needs to bring the tongues of life to give us the tongue of the Holy Spirit, something of God to put in our mouth to help us. First of all, it's an unknown spiritual prayer. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God, for no man understands him. Howbeit the Spirit, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Verse 14, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but by my mind is unfruitful. My mind being unfruitful says that I do not understand what I'm praying. So the importance of tongues is that it enables our spirit to speak. Our spirit is the redeemed, brand new part that God brings to our lives. Our spirit is new. Our spirit is our inner man. It's Christ within us. Our spirit needs to speak. Our mind needs to be renewed and speak. And our life patterns need to change and speak as a living letter. Our mind is being renewed. Our body will be redeemed. It is quickened in this life, but will be received as a new body in the future. But our spirit will not be renewed. Our spirit is already renewed. And it's no good subjecting our spirit to our old man tongue or our old man body. And by giving the gift of tongues, it enables our spirit to speak as we'll see in some of these other verses. For he speaks not to men, but to God, not even to me, to my own mind, but my spirit is communing directly with God. And they are mysteries to me. They're not mysteries to God, but they're mysteries to me. We also receive the spirit to speak in tongues for the purpose of worship and thanks. Worshipping in an unexpressible way and giving thanks beyond words. Have you ever been beyond words to thank somebody? Have you ever been tongue-tied when somebody's given you a gift and you, you haven't been able to express yourself? Have you ever been in a position where you were speaking at somebody's uh, wedding or birthday and you so love this person but you cannot express it in words? Everything you think of to say, you feel ashamed to say because it doesn't match up with what you feel. And the Holy Spirit is given to us to express the inexpressible. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 15, What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. In verse 16 to 17, he says, Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. So we see in there, in verse 15, 
that we can worship in the spirit and that in verse 16 we can give thanks in the spirit and these are are very good ways of being able to express to God our innermost feeling and so when we're alone and we we're seeking to worship the Lord it's easy for me to not remember all the words of a song it's easy for me therefore to go into the spirit and sing along in the spirit because I'm not expected to know the words of the spirit and so we are freed up to worship God in our spirit to sing in tongues and we are free to switch back to our native language and to speak in the words that we know how to express and likewise the true with thanks when it comes to God we need need never be speechless but to tap in our into our spirit to worship him and to be thankful from our innermost hearts and it's a beautiful thing even with others as we uh, pray and worship God to hear a congregation worshiping in the spirit together is such a beautiful thing it's such a perfect form of worship and the presence of God is often so strong in that situation because when we're in our language we're we're limited by our language to express our worship to God but then we people are tapping into their spirit instead of their mind then they're tapping into their spirit so it seems a lot more pure in the spirit and it can be a rich uh, time of worship before the Lord so the Holy Spirit really helps in that area the third area of the nature of tongues is its intercessory aspect and Romans 8 says it this way from verse 26 likewise the spirit also helps our weaknesses for we do not not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groans which cannot be uttered now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to to the will of God so we can see here that we do not understand our own selves as well as we would like and we come to periods of time where we don't even know how to pray we don't even know what we should pray and we don't even know how to express ourselves concerning ourselves and it says that the spirit himself will intercede for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and it's quite clear here that the mind of the spirit is known by the Holy Spirit and is communing with our spirit and interceding for us according to the will of God when I pray in language then it can quite easily be that I'm praying according to my will but when I'm praying according to the spirit then yes it might be my express spirit expressing itself to God but because I'm in an attitude of prayer then the Holy Spirit is right there as well and so there's a communion that's happening that he who searches the things of God knows what the minds of the mind of the spirit is and so he is able to pray through us according to the will of God and the same is true when it comes to praying for others the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 6 verse 18 says pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel and so here he's saying we can intercede for the church for all the saints and for him as of somebody who's on the front line so whether it's a specific individual or other people our other groups of people even our local church or a subset of it or the kingdom of God as a whole then he says pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit that we should frequently allow our spirit to meditate as it were or participate in the intercession for the kingdom of God for the church of the living God and for those that are on the front line we can easily run out of words our knowledge is limited our knowledge of circumstances is limited but God is not limited and those groanings which cannot be uttered can enter into into our heart and we can find ourselves uh, 
expressing a feeling of the spirit without knowing any facts about the situation. And we can, can follow that, that leading up or down in intensity as we follow the spirit of God. 3.4, the nature of tongues also helps with strengthening us, strengthening our walk in God. Jude chapter 1, verse 17 to 21 says, But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, build, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Wow, what a rich passage of scripture. Comparing those that don't have the Spirit with those that do have the Spirit. That as we pray in the Spirit, we are being built up on our most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit keeps our tongue pure. It contrasts with these walking sensually who ultimately causes divisions, not having the Spirit. But as we're praying in the Holy Spirit, we keep ourselves in the love of God, the purposes of God, let's say, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, meaning that God's mercies, the mercies of God are new every day, leading and guiding us, keeping us in the, in the, in the spirit of God, building us up in our most holy faith. We are stronger and stronger as we persevere in tongues. So now having looked at some of the purposes and nature of tongues, then I'd like to look at the kinds of tongues. And I've divided it into two sections to speak about private tongues and public tongues. Pretty much everything I've been saying, I've been focusing on private tongues uh, to this point in time. So I'll deal with that first. By private tongues, I mean those, those tongues that are mostly delivered when I'm by myself, or even if it's incidental that other people are around me, it's mainly by myself. It's, I, can be, I can be in prayer and then you enter the room. Then it doesn't mean that you're automatically in, included in my prayer. I could be singing to myself and as you walk in the room, I continue the song. It doesn't mean that I'm singing to you. And likewise with the Spirit. When it comes to private tongues, we can be, we could be with others, but it can still be private in that way. And we see with private tongue, it's that my spirit prays, that I am praying to God in 1 Corinthians 14 2. We've already looked at this. We've seen that it's a communion in our spirit from Romans 8 27, whether it's intercession or whether it's giving thanks, there's a, there's a communion that's taking place with the Spirit of God. But there's also a mention in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 about the, the tongues of angels versus the tongues of men. And as the, the tongues of angels is like, uh, you could imagine a situation where you receive a different kind of a tongue when you're interceding. And it can be a tongue of angels that angels understand. I don't understand it, you don't understand it, but God is using you in spiritual warfare to pray into the spiritual realm. Or maybe as he's given you an, a way through the Holy Spirit, because it's really the Holy Spirit that's praying through us in the tongues of angels who's enabling us. We can't do it unless it's enabled by God. Concerning angels that may actually be around us, it, so it may, it may not even be evil angels, but it may be good angels that, is, that we're communing with uh, through the Spirit of God. But these are all private matters. These are not matters for doctrine. They're not matters for, uh, for doing with other people particularly. But they're experiences that you have in the Spirit of God. They're private tongues. But there is a, uh, two aspects of public tongues. And the first one is the, the tongues of men, also mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, as I mentioned. 
but also uh, in Acts where they had their first experience and others heard them praying and glorifying God in their own language even though the speaker did not know that language. And so these are the tongues of men. It's, it's being spoken so that others can hear, so that they can understand. The Spirit of God knows when a person needs to understand it and so it will be delivered in their language. This is, seems like a strange thing to, to happen. It seems like a marvellous thing to happen. But once you're talking about God, then all things are possible. All things are possible. Whatever he wants to happen can happen. I've known people who have received spontaneously the ability to play on a particular instrument. That seems marvellous. That seems amazing. That's a, that's a mathematical slash musical language that somebody could receive how to do that. Then it's not so strange when you think about it that somebody can receive a language they've never spoken before. Just for a brief time, maybe a sentence or two uh, that's been delivered to, for God's purposes, for somebody else to hear. Then there is tongues for interpretation, which I'll draw attention to from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. For this, verse 13 of chapter 14, for this reason, anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. And verse 27 to 28, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. But there is, if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10 to 11, speaking about spiritual gifts. And to another, he gives different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. These three passages of Scripture are talking about tongues for interpretation. That the Spirit of God will move upon a person. And how would you know whether it's public or private? Well, first of all, you're in a public situation. And as we begin to, secondly, as we begin to speak, then in my experience that I've noticed that I will receive a, a tongue that is different from my normal tongue. It is most people's experience that they have a normal uh, default prayer language. It's very similar, lots of different words and phrases, but it, but it feels and sounds very similar. In your prayer language, then you can come across those tongues of angels, as I've, as I've mentioned, where it might be quite different. Or there can be subtle changes where, there's, where it seems like it's a different language but you're in a private situation. This can happen in a public situation and you will receive this different tongue. And then if you check with the Spirit, you feel this unction that I need to speak this, this tongue out loud. This is where the witness's spirit is. You feel like you need to speak this tongue out, that it's not for you. And you can check and it sounds different because it's already percolating in your spirit. And you can hear it, if you like, before you speak it. Or you can say a few words to yourself and you think, there's a message here and the witness of the Spirit is agreeing with you. And so you begin to speak it out. And anybody who's listening to you can, and may know you can think, this is different, this is not this person's normal tongue. And so what will happen in a meeting situation is... Somebody listening to that will receive a vision or receive a word. It's an interpretation. It's not a translation. They interpret what you say. They, they get an understanding of what God is trying to say more particularly because it is a gift granted by the Holy Spirit. Then it is the same Holy Spirit that is giving them an impression or an understanding of what is happening. So one person begins to speak and it triggers another person to ask, what are you saying, Lord? And that openness that God is saying something and that openness allows God to give them a revelation. And so then they bring it forth. I think God is trying to say this and they may bring forth their picture or their word or whatever it is that God gave them. So what is happening here? 
Well, it's laid out uh, further on in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that God does this. He divides severally and gives things out to different people so that people have need of each other. And that is why God gives gifts to everybody, not just to one person. It is so that nobody can say, I have no need of the body. I am self-contained. And that is one of the reasons why God will give tongues in interpretation. It's just another way that he can bind the body together. Is it strictly necessary? Well, no. If, if people are already seeking for prophecy, if they're already saying, what are you saying, Lord? And God can bring into their mind something that he's saying. But what's, let's say a person is not, not open to receiving prophecy directly, but God wants to use them and involve them in the, in, the, in the meeting. Then he can give them an unction in the spirit. If they have faith for, oh, it's, it's easy for me to pray in the spirit. I have my own prayer language. This is a little bit different, but I can pray this language that you're giving, given to me. They can feel it. So I've, they've got faith for that. But individual details of a situation, they may not have faith for that. They may not be open to receive it. So God is able to use that person. And another person who maybe wasn't thinking about the things of God at that moment, then he can trigger them to be open and they are able to receive the revelation that this meaning was all about. And so God is able to use it to bring us all together in the things of God. He is an amazing God. God is able to do all things well. So as we come to conclude this session, if you have not received the gift of tongues, then I'd like to encourage you to even in this time after this, this session to present yourself to receive, some, receive your gift of tongues, to speak in tongues for the very first time, to wait on God, to participate in prayer and to begin to speak. And this is a mistake that most people make is they wait for God to give them words. Does anybody give a baby words when they begin to speak in language? Nobody gives them the words to say. Maybe mum or dad are saying, dad, dad, or mum, mum. And maybe you're with people who pray in the spirit and they may be saying, pray like this or pray like that. But that is not coming from the individual person. They're just mimicking something. But every baby comes to the stage where they're expressing something and they, they get that mum means mum and dad means dad and they identify something in their mind or in their heart and they're able to speak it out. But it begins with a desire and a willingness to speak. And in this moment, in this moment as we're waiting on God to receive our prayer language, then we have to be willing to open our mouth and speak as the Spirit is stirring among us. And we're trusting that God will take up our speech and give us fluency in the same way that a newborn baby gets beyond the few words and syllables until they can speak a human language fluently. Then it is the same with the things of the Spirit. That Some people can be fluent right from the beginning almost like a, because it is a gift of tongues after all. But other people are, are shyer or more reticent and so it takes a while for the Holy Spirit to be able to overcome uh, their ability to utter uh, the, their prayer, in their prayer language. But he will give utterance as you speak. So as you continue to speak, then you will get freer and freer. And finally, you can uh, pray with others. I've mentioned before about public tongues. It's not public tongues to pray with two or three other people. That passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians 14 was talking about a public meeting where strangers could come in. And he spoke about that if you read that passage of scripture. It's not wrong to be with other believers and pray together in the spirit. And not to interpret, but to pray in the spirit. There's nothing wrong with that because it's not a public meeting, it's a private meeting. And so you can encourage one another and be in, this, in the spirit together, praying in the spirit together. It will strengthen you and help bring you fluency. So I challenge you to open up your heart. 
if there's somebody with you that they would lay hands upon you and believe with you to receive the gift of tongues today thank you father father I just ask you right now to bring your presence around every person thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Father, we're in, in obedience in your presence right now. Seeking and waiting and asking for that which you promised. Father, I lift up my brothers and sisters as their hearts are bowed and their hearts are reaching expressly and expectantly out to you that you would give them the gift of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name we worship you Residi di araba kushukula da Maria toto kusukula da bariata. Residi di andara barra kashakara bariatra. Release them in Jesus' name. Release their spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them utterance right now. In your powerful name, Lord Jesus. Sita da boria to kusukula da bariata to kusikia da radidi. Le sidi ni andara muri kasha komari ato kusiki biata dara borakati. E sina muri baba muri kusiki biata ta dorot. Le na na maya tunga mane suma. Me suno na bore kusuku bore akata. Le sidi di di amone ate andova. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Oh, it's a little bit hard. Whenever you express yourself and you're pressing into God, it's really hard to come back sometimes, you know. It's not like you can't think. But something in your, in your heart and in your spirit wants you just to go further and to lock further and closer into him. You know, you just feel like you're going to receive a revelation, that you're, you can feel something stirring in your spirit and something building. But at the same time, there's this anticipation that at any moment God could reveal something to you in prayer. So let us all who have received the gift of tongues already be committed to let tongues be our default. That whenever we're alone, we have that default. That we've got tongues percolating in our spirit, whether we're in their shower or whether we're in the, in the car or, or whatever we're doing, we're contemplating a, a decision. And whether it's out loud or quietly under our breath or even in our heart, that it's percolating there in our heart and in our mind. But also that we have seasons, we, we get more deliberate where there's a focus and where there's a purpose, then we can press in in tongues because we don't know how do we, we should pray in every situation. And in that moment, we can be alert, the sense of alertness for revelation because in the same way that another person can get an interpretation of a specific kind of a tongue, then we can get an interpretation or a revelation on the heels of praying in the Spirit because it's almost as it were that the, the Holy Spirit begins to flow out of us like that living water that Jesus uh, prophesied that we would have. Out of our bellies will flow rivers of, little, of living water, out of our innermost being. And that's what is happening. And that living water will bring revelation, bring direction, bring a remembrance of Scripture, bring a bring a development within our heart, bring a strengthening. 
And lastly, that as we pray in the Spirit, it can intensify, as I say, it can lead us down a path and we should follow that unction. Let it rise, let it fall, let it grow intensity, let it, let it be tender, whatever the Spirit is de desiring to be, and let it flow. And if it's an intercession, it can build, and it can be uh, flood into our emotions as well. But then it will break and pass, and we don't have to push it. If it's broken and passed, let it go. The Holy Spirit has done his work. He's partnered with us in what he wanted to do, and we can let it go. We don't have to manufacture anything. All we have to do is present our tongue, present our spirit to, to turn over, and whatever the unction is, we can follow that. And we will find ourselves praying in the will of God constantly without ever understanding what it is. And so is, with my concluding verse, a bit of a joke really, in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18 it says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. And so I put that out there as a challenge, uh, that you try and speak in tongues more than me. Of course, we're never going to be side by side to measure it, but the Apostle Paul is putting the challenge out there that he thanks God that he speaks in tongues more than us all. And it reads to me like a challenge. He's encouraging us to speak in tongues, albeit with the proper guidelines, but speak in tongues as much as you possibly can. Amen. God bless you. Have a great life. Wow, what a great message that was. We're really excited to share with you that this is not just a standalone sermon series, even though you can just keep it as a sermon series. But it is also a Cert 3 course. I know this seems a little scary, but it's actually quite simple. All you need to do is complete the Google form that's the second link in the description each week after each sermon. And at the very end of this series, you'll get yourself a Cert 3 certificate. We're really excited to share with you this series and we pray that it's going to be so impactful in your life regardless of whether you complete it at Cert 3 or not. So tune in next week for another great message.